Giammi man. I was born for greatness. My greatness comes from my potent center. I pledge to find and connect with my center. I pledge to build my spirit, mind, and body. I pledge to use my hands to build a better world for myself, my loved ones, and my community. I pledge to use my mind to think deeper, further, and higher to create a better reality for myself. I pledge to live my life and go beyond all my self-imposed limitations. I pledge to promote the principles of the Giammi warrior and to assist all those seeking a path of success. I pledge all these things first to myself, to my teachers, to all my relations, and to my higher power. I am Giammi. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. That is the Giammi players that are said by all of our true members at least once a day. Peace and welcome to our YouTube channel. Check out our videos and podcasts. Subscribe as well as join the journey. Push past your self-imposed limitations within the Giammi journey. Peace. Sorry for the pause. I had to pause for the calls. You know, I'm sitting up here trying to send out the messages that need to go out to make sure I get the people in that need to be in. All right, the conference is starting. So, hey, feel free to call in at 614-556-4535. Now, of course, y'all know we are going into the African openness to tree of life, right? And before we get there, I need to let you know you are now listening to Giammi Journey Radio. I am your host, Brother Hatim. And of course, you know this is Tribal Quotes, and this is a Heart of a Simba production. Where we strive to blow up all your old paradigms. Also, I had to get my glasses, y'all know. Um, you know, my eyes is, is struggling at this point in time. But we working on some things, you know, because this ambrosia is working. Because, you know, like I said, for those that don't know, I started a new diet today. I know that y'all like, what, what? What diet? You little skinny sucker. You know what I'm saying? You go on a diet? Well, I'm trying this thing called five after five. So what I have to do is... I have to wait till 5 p.m. every day and eat all that I want. You know what I'm saying? Between 5 and 10. Tonight is going to be between 5 and 11 because I am going to grub because I haven't eaten all day. I've just been drinking tea, sipping on some ambrosia, and doing what I do. My energy level is, is off the charts. I was working the kids out today. We had our, uh, we had our warrior meeting. And it was a great, great, great thing. So, I will let y'all know how it goes. Because I told you, um, I started doing my sh my Shea Breath Meditation. Um, I started um, taking um, a cold shower every day. I started um, on the Ambrosia on a daily basis. And I'm doing this five after five. Right, and I'm trying to keep it as close to raw and steam food as I can. So I'm doing salads, um, some steam stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm uh, I'm not really feeling hungry because you know this is the second day, so I'm kind of I'm kind of high off the fact that I made it through the whole day. Um, for those that want to learn a, sh a shade breath, there will be a, a, a video posted. Um, the, a shea breath is basically the bellows breath for those that are into breath exercising. Um, also, it's known nowadays as the Wim Hof method. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you can go and look him up. He's the ice man. And, and, and his breathing method requires um, cold training and stuff like that. So that's why I incorporated the shower piece into it. But the piece that I'm trying to do is get to a point of physical fitness. To a point where when y'all look and y'all wonder about the ambrosia, you know what I'm saying? I want you to be able to have a living model. And that, that will be me until I get some other people drinking. And speaking of the ambrosia, I have people 
um, getting with me today. This is another reason I'm kind of running late. I have people getting with me today to ask questions about that ambrosia. Um, I had to I had to get an ad together for that ambrosia um, because you know we're coming into the holiday seasons where a lot of people are gonna have free time. They're gonna want to be trying new things. Some people gonna want to take New Year resolutions and stuff like that. Um, and I, I'm I'm trying to build up my stock, but I, it's hard for me to keep up because people are donating to the journey. Because when you donate to the journey, I give you um, the uh, I give you the ambrosia. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying. So you donate to the journey. You got some bottles waiting for you, right? So hey, shouts out to all those family members that are, are getting in contact with me about that ambrosia, and we're working it, right? We're pushing it now. Um, on to the next thing, um, the next fundraiser that we got going on. Um, I'm going to play that, and then we're going to get into a little bit of news, and then right after that, we're going to move right into our discussion. The word is spreading. More and more people are switching to Ambit Energy. Well, one of my neighbors switched, and then I switched. Now the whole neighborhood has Ambit. Who doesn't want to save money? The word is spreading. Switching to Ambit Energy is rewarding in more ways than one. I signed up and got a travel reward. That's nice. Oh, I get to save on energy and on travel? There's a cruise for two out there just a few thousand kilowatts away. I can almost smell the sunscreen. The word is spreading. Ambit Energy even lets you earn free energy. When I get 15 friends to switch, I get free energy. I have 15 friends. At least I think I do. Hey, I'd be telling people to switch to Ambit anyway. If you'd like to switch to Ambit Energy, listen to the following contact information closely. Then spread the word. All right, you heard the man listen. Those of you that are interested, those of you that might be vaguely, might be considering, you, 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 you're sitting on the fence. This is a nation-building initiative. I need y'all to understand that we are paying money monthly and it's all going outside of our community. Now, Ambrosia, we got all, all types of other businesses that we do, but these are not necessities, but heat and electricity are necessities. And what I'm imploring you to think about in your consumption, in your energy consumption, is to think about the fact that there is a company out here called Ambit Energy that you can get with as an independent consultant like Giami Journey is. You can get on and you can make money providing people with necessities of life. See, this is where they got us, right? You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what color you are, you are. That 1% got us because they provide us with the necessities. They have stock in the necessities. They own the necessities, and we have to always return to them, right? You know what I'm saying? You need a car. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at who owns the stock in the, in the let's who own the car companies. You need the houses. Who own these 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 industries that build the houses? Who provide the wood for the houses? You know what I'm saying? You need the heat and electricity. Who run these? Ambit Energy is an opportunity for us to slide in into one of the areas of life that all of us need to survive. And by you supporting Giami Journey, by becoming a consultant under us and getting in this hustle with us, or just by you saying, look, I ain't got time for that, Brother Hot Tim, but I'll support y'all. Boom. What happens is that a portion of what you pay goes to Giami Journey for our nation-building initiatives. We have to build institutions within our communities so that we can maintain ourselves so that we can so that we can start creating those jobs and creating those business opportunities building those banks building those other institutions and energy is one of those ways we could do that by you signing up with us on Amber Energy what you do is you enable yourself as well as others to start building a business. Now, let, now let, let me tell you this. Do Amber Energy. You don't even have to be a salesperson. If you come into Amber Energy under Giame, right? If you come with us uh, uh, under Giame and we are able to work together to find 15 of your friends or 15 other people 
that come in with you, your energy portion of your bill, whether it's electricity or gas, will be free. I need you to understand, there's no other companies doing this. This is why I jumped on the opportunity. I'm not out here cold calling people. I'm not out here um, being aggressive with trying to sell it. You know what I'm saying? I'm investing in it because I believe in it. And I believe that the return will outdo what I have, what I am investing and what the group is investing on a monthly basis, right? So I'm appealing to you. I'm saying to you, right? Make sure that you check it out now. You go to uh, um, our, our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash G and J energy. You go down, you click the sign up button. You don't have to sign up. But it'll take you to the rates and plans page. You go to the rates and plan page and you type in your zip code. Once you type in your zip code, you will be able to see what is available for you in that zip code. And then from there, you can look at the prices and compare them to the prices that you're paying. And you will see that you can save money or at least pay at least the same amount. And then on top of that, we don't provide any contracts there's no contracts once you get into a plan you can say i don't like it no more and jump right back to aep jump right back to uh, columbia gas that's your choice but the point that i'm saying is give it a try right now on to uh, more ambrosia talk right because now what's going on with that with that ambrosia right is um i just had a talk with uh, my oldest blood son right um and um I was I, I was telling him about what's going on, and um, he got excited. And the 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 reason he got excited because I'm talking generational wealth here, because this is a 1.4 billion dollar industry that we are able to step our foot in as a family, right? You know, and I'm not just talking blood family because um, a lot of y'all um, are going to benefit. A lot of y'all are benefiting because, you know, I'm giving out a lot of bottles as well as selling a lot of I mean, not selling, but I'm giving away a lot of bottles. Let's just put it that way, right? So not only can you benefit financially, but you could benefit health-wise um, um, because you could get rid of pop. You got something that you could drink and sip on with your meals. You know what I'm saying? You got a little nightcap for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, did, we, we, have, we have something that can be useful in your life that's waiting to serve you waiting to 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 satisfy your thirst you know what i'm saying so hey hit us up at giami journey you know join the journey you know get on the journey let's do this we could build now you got a couple of news things we need to run through real quick um trump will get power to text all americans this is from news cdn.newsrep.net that's a long name i thought giami journey was long well anyway um once trump walks into the white house trump will be able to text the whole nation at the same time you know uh that's an interesting thought you know as if i don't have enough fuckery going on in my life would i have to worry about the great pumpkin texting me you know what i'm saying you know but hey you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know, it is what it is. And and regardless of who is in the White House, and this is what a lot of y'all have to understand, who, regardless of who in the White House, we still got to make it, we still got to make it happen. We still got to make it happen. Um, I'm going to shut down my Uber conference because it says I'm not getting no audio. So if you call in and let me know, and I will call back in and let you join the show. Remember that number is 614-556-4535. Um, I got some fuckery to help you with your digestion. You know, some of y'all that live on fuckery, here goes some more fuckery. Your boy Charles Barkley drops the bomb about police during town hall and audience erupts and forces it to be cut short because they was trying to get at his ass. Now, I'm not going to read the article, but those of you that are familiar with Charles Barkley, and the way that he talks, you understand that Charles Barkley has a way of rubbing people the wrong way. He has a way of uh, presenting himself as an expert at certain things when 
Maybe he's not. Um, maybe he might need to stick to the sports um, and on other, other all other factors, especially dealing with people of color. Maybe he might need to keep his mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is from an alternate um, um, uh, 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 right-wing newspaper, some right-wing news. You know, I try to keep in tune with a lot of stuff. Um, this is also from newscdn.newsrep.net. Um, so, um, I have another post. All this is on Giami Journey, um, um, Giami Journey, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Giami Journey. Um, dad gets seventeen thousand dollars demand for child support. Leaves final message for his son before killing himself. And um, the what I posted with this is this is a sad situation, and unfortunately, I have been where this man was. Child support, though necessary, can be a very stressful thing, especially in a time when you, as a payer, feel that other feel the other pressures of life. It is tough to move on with your life when a significant portion of your income is flying away from you. You can't afford a lawyer, you have nowhere, nowhere to turn, and everyone is hitting you with hindsight statements. Like, you know, you shouldn't have, you should have, should have strapped up, or you should have, you should you know, you don't, you know those type of people. Those motherfuckers who, who, who pretend like they made all the right choices in their, in their life, right? You should have, you should have. You know, I'm guilty of that sometime too. You know what I'm saying? Child support is needed, but it should be, but should it should, it, but it should not be crippling. What do you think? You know what I'm saying? This is a very powerful discussion because I honestly believe that child support, in many ways, is, um, is another chain. It, it, it's basically, it's basically slavery because they tell you, you know what I'm saying? If you don't get this money, you going to prison. If you don't, I mean, really. And you might need to check and see how many people are in prison right now because they weren't able to pay child support. You know what I'm saying? Because some people aren't like me. You know, they're not going to look, well, it's going to, you know, I'm going to laugh about this one day. A lot of y'all know my philosophy. I'm going to laugh about this one day. Right? So I was able to squeeze through. But some people just, you know, you know, they see those numbers and then they do the math in their head. And they look and say, damn, my child is 13 years old. I, I owe 18000 and shit. I mean, we got another eight years of this. You know, I, I'm having relationship problems. I can't find a relationship because I don't have no money to, to really deal with anything. A lot of y'all be like, well, money ain't everything in a relationship, but shut up. Look at all the divorces that are happening because of money. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll turn around and say some shit like that, right? So let's keep it real, right? You know what I'm saying? The financial peace in America is a very serious thing. And anything that takes away from that unfairly and unjustly, because like, for example, um, when you pay child support, they take child support post taxes. So when you pay child support, this means you pay child support, right? They take all the taxes out. Then they pull out the child support, but they base the amount of a child support you're paying on your pre-tax amount. And I, I know that might have flew over a lot of your head. You're paying taxes on how much you make, but then they take child support out of your money after taxes are taken. So, in a sense, you get taxed for the money that they're taking for child support. Then they take the child support money out of that. Rather than having child support pre-tax, that comes out like the federal government's money, like the state government's money, like the county money. No, child support don't come out like that. Child support comes out after you pay the goddamn taxes. And that shit hurts. You know what I'm saying? You might save you, you, might save you a couple of dollars if they did it the other way. But then also, we might need to look at the equations for how they charge this child support. Because I, I am convinced that the rates that they got people paying child support now is probably the same um, levels that they had people paying child support back in the 70s when we know that the dollar is not stretching like it was in the 70s. 
And I know some of y'all still want that. You need to be paying more. But then how the fuck am I supposed to live? You know what I'm saying? Why, why should I stay in the workforce if all my money is going somewhere else? Right? This guy was paying $800 a month for one kid. Now, also, child support tells you this. You could decide to change your lifestyle. You could decide to go back to school, but that's a choice, and you're still going to continue paying the amount that you was paying when you was making the maximum amount of money in your life. What if your life take a, a serious downturn? What if you got to go back to school so that you get an education so that you can get back in the work, workforce? We know that we just went through a recession. You think motherfuckers paying child support ain't go through the recession too? Could we not possibly need to relook at child support policy? I'm not saying get rid of child support because the children do need the support. But the children need a little bit more than just money. Because a lot of times you eliminate the father from the child's life because the father can no longer afford to be in a child's life. I was just talking with my son about, uh, uh, about, about child support. Cause he he's going he where I, where he is I was, you know what I'm saying. His is just a little bit different, but the point that I'm trying to make is this: he has to make a choice because of his skill level, because of his education level, and even even without that, because I had to make the same choice when I just I graduated from college. He had to make the choice between car, which would help him maintain his lifestyle, and apartment or house they don't take in consideration you paying child support when you're paying for these apartments or when you're trying to get a house they don't take in, they don't take that shit in account they don't take it in account that you're paying child support when you're going to the, the grocery store they don't take that shit in account when you're trying to get clothes for work nobody you know what i'm saying he should have just knew better right okay all right but, hey, we're going to move on from that. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of fuckery out there with this. And I know a lot of y'all are sensitive and shit. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and some of you and some of you men out there that are in support of that shit and living off the child support, you know what I'm saying, that another man is sending into your house, that's kind of problematic for me. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you taking another man's money and shit, right? He, you know, he paying half your utilities. He should get half that pussy. I'm just saying, I'm, you know what I'm saying, same, and, and, and for my daughter that playing, that's paying child support, you know what I'm saying, she paying child support, when she want to go get that thing, she need to be able to get that thing, you know what I'm saying, if you, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, you got that money coming in the house, and you got a whole family, mm, come on now, alright, um, the computer is scrolling kind of slow, I got some more news pieces I wanted to hit you with, where my phone at, bring, the, bring that phone in. Ain't it funny how phones are now outpacing computers? I know y'all like, Brother Hatim, where is, where is the folk tale for grown folks? It's coming. It's coming. I'm getting my phone, and my phone is still moving faster than my damn computer. That's a, that's a damn shame. All right. Oh. My phone, my phone popped up, but it's still moving. It's moving slow too. So all right. So now, what that means is that's the ancestors saying, "All right, brother Tim, shut your mouth and open up that book, because somebody needs this wisdom." Yo, all those people out there that have tried. All right. Oh, that's tried ambrosia. Please take a picture of yourself drinking the ambrosia that you like and. And post it up for me, please. Send me a link. All right. Do anybody know how to turn off inappropriate um, inappropriate pop-ups? I keep getting I keep getting something I don't want, and I want I keep turning off the damn notification. But every time I pull up my screen and I look at what's going on on Facebook. I put I pushed the little planet Earth. Um, this inappropriate video pop up. You know I ain't I ain't all into that. You know what I'm saying those of you that sending porno to me, please, please keep it. I, I, 
I don't. I, 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 I'm not into that. I'm not into that. So don't send me that shit. That shit is not appealing to me. Whether you black, white, or Asian, you know what I'm saying? If you are alien, if you from another planet, I might be interested for the first couple of minutes. But other than that, I don't need no damn pornos. Don't send me that shit. All right? Mark me off all those lists. And I ain't been watching Porter. I don't. It's somebody on Facebook that sent me a friend request. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go in and defriend her. Maybe that'll stop it. You know what I'm saying? Good God am I. How many times you? And how they keep turning on your notifications? You turn off your notification, right? And people just friend me, and I just click it. You know what I'm saying? Now I know. Now I know why some of my friends are so picky. Now I understand. Now I understand. All right. So. We are going to the African openness, the tree of life. Class is in session. Nobody called in, so we about to jump off. So, these chapters are a lot shorter than I remember. I mean, because this this small book has had a large impact on my life. It's called the African openness, the tree of life. Um, it was compiled by E. Uh, er- Erskine Peters, scribe. Uh, for those that might be interested in getting the book, it's through a company called Regent Press. Get them before um, I buy the copyright. Because after Ambrose jump off, I'm buying the copyright to this book. All right. So, the first two proverbs we're going to cover are, in a sense, the title proverbs for this chapter. So, I'm only going to do three because I don't want to hold you up. The name, of the, the name of the chapter is The Exercise of Sacrifice. And I want y'all to think about that. The Exercise of Sacrifice. Sacrifice is an exercise, right? So that means that when you do it, you become stronger. That means that when you do it, your ability to sacrifice becomes stronger. And a lot of us, we are not able to get to where we want to get to because we are not willing to sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? One of my favorite proverbs. Those who are not willing to sacrifice shall not be fulfilled. Straight from this book. All right. As y'all can hear, Miss Sasha is stomping off. I don't even know why she's still up. We just, well, actually, we just got home and she was waiting up for her brother and sister. First proverb is a Yoruba proverb. It says, farmers hoe and hoe. They forget not one weed on yam heaps. That's number one. Number two, one cannot both feast and become rich. That's a shanti. And the and last one for the day. Sacrifice. Sacrifices have to be made to stay towards the center. Say the knowledge holders. I need to get my pen. Um, all right. Um my pen is not available so I can mark so I know where we are for next week. So let's start. We're going to go in order since there's nobody here. Farmers ho and ho. They forget, that they forget not one weed on yam heaps, right? For those who are familiar with um, African culture, a major food source in Africa is the African yam. By the way, what we call yams in America are not yams. They're orange potatoes. So people been lying to you when they say sweet potatoes is not, is not, is, I mean, when they say sw- candy yams, they're not candy yams, they're s- sweet potatoes. That's, you know what I'm saying? African yam is a major staple in Africa. And in order for, the, in order for them to grow, they have to make sure that all the weeds are not on the mile. See, because they, 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 um. They 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 form heaps of dirt so that the so that the um the yam can grow. And you can't allow any weeds to get on this. So the, the farmer has to make the sacrifice of going out there and doing his due diligence and eliminating every weed. Right? He's he has to sacrifice his time. He may have other things to do, but he has to constantly be wary that a weed, one weed, can destroy his yam heap. And it's not like with us, where 
we're in this time because you got to remember a lot of these proverbs are old right so back in the day they didn't have refrigerators where they could store a lot of food they had to make when when they were out there hustling you know what i'm saying our ancestors used to hustle they had to get out there and hustle to make sure that the food was there you know what i'm saying they had to make those sacrifices so the farmers hoe and hoe you know what i'm saying and those that don't know what the hoe is is a is a tool that you use to move the dirt around to 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 um to to get rid of the weeds to make sure that the soil is loose enough so the roots can can move so those farmers have to get out there and make the sacrifice of their time have to make the, and, and give one of the most powerful libations that you can give sweat see a lot of us we talk about pouring libations right you know what i'm saying but libations is actually supposed to be a sacrifice you know what i'm saying when back in the day when individuals was pouring wine you know what i'm saying that was rare you ain't couldn't go to the goddamn kroger's and get no wine you know what I'm saying? You had to make that shit yourself so that when you so when you poured it to the earth, you know what I'm saying? You was pouring away some of your sustenance. Water, you didn't just couldn't go just to the store or, or go to the tap and just turn it on. No, you had to go struggle to get that shit. Libations is about sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? So when these farmers are out here hoeing and hoeing in the hot sun, they're giving the ultimate sack they given the second highest sacrifice now for those that follow Jami's journey i told you the order of libations right you have the higher order libation the highest libation that you can give is your blood it's blood period your blood is the highest somebody or something else's blood is all right you know what i'm saying it's it works but your blood is the highest you know what I'm saying? Your blood and effort. You know what I'm saying? It's the highest libation. The next highest libation is sweat. Right? Why you say libations? Because when you bleed, does it not fall to the earth? When you sweat, does it not fall from your brow to the earth? If you those of you that worked hard enough at something, you know what I'm saying? That's the, that's a libation that you pour, and that's a salute to your efforts. Right? The third highest is tears. Then we get to the liquor or wine, and then last is water, especially nowadays, right? Now, the order would kind of switch depending on how rare water was. Right now, water is on the lower totem pole of libation. You want to pour out libations, you need to start moving up that totem pole. You know what I'm saying? Just don't pour libations with water. You know what I'm saying? Get out there and do, do some work. You see what I'm saying? Because we got to, this helps us connect our spirituality to reality, right? Because a lot of people is living a spirituality that's disconnected from reality, right? But when you are pouring the real libations, you are in motion, you are in action, you are at work. You know what I'm saying? Even on a yam heap, you know, you might cut yourself, but that's like an offering to your ancestors, to the universe, to the very yams that you are growing, right? Because that blood is going right there. That blood was done in that effort. You know what I'm saying? That sweat. You know what I'm saying? Some people might even cry over that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Libations, right? So, you know what I'm saying? If you want to have a strong harvest, if you want to 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 get what you need you have to get out there and put effort into it and pour that real libation get that real libation flowing you know what i'm saying i got young people who say they want to be professional athletes but don't like to sweat i got i got young people who tell me they want to be doctors but don't like to sweat don't want to open those books and sometimes cry because you just can't get that shit you know have have you ever studied something just could not get it and it would bring you to tears because you needed the information you know you were supposed to know it but you just could not get it the other day i saw um my daughter she was struggling with math and uh i, I was you know and y'all know you know my patience level my god all right 
Well, anyway, I'm trying to teach her math, and she was crying. I had her sitting working at the table. She started crying and blah, blah, blah. And it hit me in a way to, that I could help her get basic addition and subtraction by using pennies. So I went and got the pennies. And But before I went and got the pennies, she was sitting at the at the paper, and she, she was crying, and she started saying um, the Millennium Pledge or the Giami Pledge. You know, I just I shaped it. I, I reformed it a little bit for kids. You say, um, I, I, I am a Millennium Warrior. I was born for greatness. And she was just reciting this. You know, I'm sitting up here like, wow. You know, our, our kids truly do what we do. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but she pouring that libation out of her eyes, suffering, struggling with this thing because she can't get it like her other friends and she's crying. But in her tears, her answer is going to come because she didn't quit. So as long as I can motivate her to keep trying and to keep trying and understand that in order to get to get good at something, you have to fail, right? Failure is a is a sacrifice, is it not? You got to sacrifice your ego. It's a struggle, right? To be like, damn, I can't, I should be good at this. I messed up at this, right? You know what I'm saying? So like that farmer out there, you have to hold and hold at your at your craft. You got to hold and hold at your business. You got to hold and hold at the heap of your dreams and sacrifice, right? I mean, I'm telling you, man, this book, man, this book changed my life. Y'all do not understand, right? Next one. One cannot both feast and become rich. This is one I'm working on. <laughs> this is one I'm working on, right? And you like, I know some of y'all thinking, what does that have to do with sacrifice? Right? But when you sit down and have a humble meal, are you not sacrificing your desire to go out and feast? Are you not, when you stay at home, instead of going out and trying to pop bottles and stuff, and you, you have something that you want, do you not sacrifice to get it? You cannot attain what it is you want to attain and feast and party. You can't do it unless that's what you, you know what I'm saying? Unless that's what you're reaching for. And let, you know what I'm saying? Unless you find a way to plug that into moving you towards your goal. But a lot of us, our goals don't include the parties. Don't include the feasting. We got the, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, you know, for, for those of you in college, we, we are very familiar with ramen noodles. Well, you, a lot of y'all are, you know, I kind of I kind of slid through college on a blessing, you know what I'm saying? Um, but anyway, um, but actually I made a sacrifice for college. I sacrificed all the partying and all the kicking it in high school. It paid off. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I sacrificed a lot of the party when I was in college. It paid off, but I graduated. Unfortunately, I graduated into an economy that, you know, you know, it was shaky. But, you know, I'm doing all right, right? But one cannot feast and become rich. One cannot feast and become wealthy. We have to be willing to sacrifice. And, and the question that you have to answer for yourself is what is it that you are willing to give up in order to get what you want what is it you're willing to give up to become rich what is it to, you're willing to give up in order to become that entrepreneur to get that business moving what is it that you're willing to give up because if you're not willing to give up nothing you're not going to gain nothing basic fact of life you have to sacrifice in order to get to where you need to be in some form or fashion a lot of us, we're so caught up on trying to find a free deal that we miss our blessing because nothing in this universe is free. We have to pay for everything we get. We have to sacrifice for everything we get. And if you do not have to sacrifice Beware of it. 
because it is a trap. Let me say that again. If you do, if you get something that you do not have to pay for it, you must beware because it is a trap. Our ancestors constantly remind us about learning the difference between a gift and a bribe. Being able to see where, see all the angles. All right. Next. And the last one for the day. Sacrifices have to be made to stay toward the sinners, said the knowledge holders. Now, those that were with me earlier, you go back to the earlier shows for um, African Openers of Tree of Life. They had a whole chapter called The Potent Center. And they talked about the power of deception. They talked about all of the life force and all of the blessings and all of the grace flowing from the center. Right? In order to stay towards the center, we must be willing to make sacrifices. Why? Because when we make those sacrifices, we make the trade for the power that flows through us from the center. Right? I mean, like I said, man, sacrifice is a key element that we must be willing to, to practice and we must be willing to get our children to understand in order for the for our community one of the reasons that we don't have communities is because we're not willing to sacrifice for those communities right you walk into um you walk into any one of our locations where we got vendors and people are, are haggling with the vendors. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to pay the full price. You know, I'm looking for the best price. Well, hey, let's look. Let, let, let's start looking for the best prices when we going over to other people's country and 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 and, and, and trying to exploit them because we don't do any negotiation when we go into the Arabs' corner store. We don't do any negotiation when we go into the Chinese restaurant. We don't do any negotiation when we go into the Koreans' hair shop. We don't go do any negotiation when we go into the Vietnamese, uh, Vietnamese um, a nail salon. No negotiations. But when you come to one of us, you know what I'm saying? You're not worthy of my sacrifice. I work hard for my money, right? We're not willing to sacrifice. We're not willing to put together the force that's necessary to kind of rein in some of these young men. Is out here wilding out. We're not willing to sacrifice. That's going to require sacrifice on a high level. That's going to require blood sacrifice. I just, we just, I we need to keep it all the way real. That's going to require blood. Some of us have to be willing, right? A little bit older. But some of us have to be willing to go out there and bleed. Someone's going to have to be willing to lay it down. You know what I'm saying? Are we willing to sacrifice to tax ourselves so that we could build what we need? See, that's a major issue. I mean, we get to fly. I mean, I you you do a program um, or you set up an organization to work with young people or adults that that help them improve. And they'll come and they will tell you while they're talking on their iPhone, standing in a pair of Air Jordans, that they don't have no money to pay for your services. And then walk out to their car and smoke some weed. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I have people that look at the, the whole Amber piece that I was doing and be like, hey, well, I might be paying um, a penny per kilowatt or something like that extra. So it's a penny. I understand. You know what I'm saying? But I understand. I'm not worth the sacrifice, right? What I'm doing is not worth the sacrifice. I understand. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I feel you. I feel you. This is why I don't pressure sales people, right? Because I like to be, and I don't, I don't like it, but a lot of times I'll be ahead of the curve. So, 
I have to wait for people to catch up. This is why I don't come out pressure selling nothing. I, I'm not into that. You know what I'm saying? Because if I can see, if I get it, more than likely, other people will get it in the meanwhile. So I just need to hold on long enough for you to catch up with me. And then you could purchase it from me. But more than likely, you're going to go somewhere else and purchase it from somebody else, right? But hey, that is, that, that's part of the, you know, sacrifice I made. And I guess that's the life choice that I made, right? In picking this life. So in order for us to build, in order for us to move towards the center as individuals, as tribes, as communities, we have to be willing to sacrifice, right? And I know a lot of y'all is wondering, Brother Hatim, why you ain't put money on that list as far as, as, far as libations? Because you do know money is a libation. Let me say that again. Money is a libation. You know what I'm saying? And actually, we could put money as a libation above the alcohol. So we can go blood, sweat, tears, money, alcohol, water. Those are the key, those are those are the elements that could be used for libation. Right? When we, you know, you know, you know, so and, and some of y'all is holding on to some of y'all is holding on to those sacrifices. Some of you is holding on to those libations and you're not pouring it in the community wondering why shit ain't coming to you. Life is the cycle that goes round and round until the laws of Maya we're bound. Right? Reciprocity. You know what I'm saying? Because you give nothing to your community, you get nothing from your community. Because you give nothing to your community, your community has withered away. Now we're standing alone. And the great pumpkin is walking into the White House, able to text every last one of us. Right? Able to, to enact policies that might not directly benefit you at all. But it's going to benefit some of his friends because he's already lining them up. I'm not even mad. Right? Can't do nothing but admire the hustle. Right? But we doing our thing too over here in Giamme. All right. Sacrifice had to be made to say, Stay toward the center, say the knowledge holders. Now, what I'm going to do is, I know I started a little bit late. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go through and send out salutes once again to uh, my listeners all over the world. All, all 10 of y'all, right? All 10 of y'all, I'm sending a salute. And I, I would love a shout out from you um, so that I know that when I'm in your area, I want to be able to get you um, your your uh, ambrosia. Because some of y'all still got free samples coming. Once again, I announced this yesterday. For the last seven days, I got the United States and Sweden are the top two countries. The top cities for this last week is Lake Mary, Florida, Ashburn, Virginia, Ouroboro, Aura, Bro, Sweden, Udavella, Sweden. That's a different order than um, yesterday. Lancaster, Ohio, and Columbus, Ohio. For the last month, I want to send shots out to the United States. Ghana, I see you moving up in rank. Sweden, India, Germany, Kenya, Belgium, Turkey, and the Netherlands. Top cities for the last four weeks. Menlo Park, California. Little Rock, Arkansas. Lake Mary, Florida. Lewis Center, Ohio. Accra, Ghana. Ypsilanti, Michigan. Ashburn, Virginia. Marietta, Georgia. Udavelle, Sweden. Udavella, Sweden. And Columbus, Ohio. Now, let's do this. I ain't do this yesterday. Let's talk about for the last six months, the top cities or top countries, United States, Peru, I see you still hanging in there, United Kingdom, Canada, Barbados, Poland, Sweden, Brazil, Ghana, and India. Top cities for the last six months, Columbus, Ohio, shots out, Lima, Peru, shots out, Marietta, Georgia, Denver, Colorado. Menlo Park, California, Ashburn, Virginia, Philadelphia, PA, Mount View, California, 
Waterford, Michigan, and Ypsilanti, Michigan. Now, I'm going to be back up there in um, around the Atlanta area. So, um, hey, hey, y'all need to hit me up so I can make sure you get your sample of this ambrosia. Um, I don't know about Virginia yet. I'm working on getting to Virginia. Uh, Michigan, that's a definitely trip. Um, Ypsilanti and Waterford. Y'all need to send some shots out so I know that, you know, like I said, you know, come up there on the um, Ambrosia Run. You know what I'm saying? You support the journey. I come up there on the Ambrosia Run. All right, this is Brother Hot Tim, and I want to thank you. I want to remind you that you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. I am your host, Brother Hot Tim, and this has been Tribal Quotes, and this is a Heart of a Simba production, where you know we strive. Our only goal is to blow up those old paradigms. Walk through the halls, please. No running.